everyone. Um, I just wanted to do a quick greeting card today. My father's birthday is on the 19th, and it's already 1245, and I've got to get this in the mail or he won't get it in, on his birthday. So I'm going to have to hustle this along. But I thought maybe you'd enjoy um, me doing a greeting card, and you can see how I do them. I have a variety of ways of doing them, but um, but today I'm just going to do a quick watercolor card for my father. He loves nature, and he will be 89 on the 19th, and it's so hard to believe. My mother passed away, like you guys know, about eight years ago now, a little over eight years ago, and um, he's very lonely without her. They were married... 59 years, just shy of their 60th wedding anniversary, I believe it was. This needs to move in a little bit. Um, and I know he'd like to just move on, but he's making the best of a bad situation, and I'm glad he's with us. He's been through a lot in his life. He was an alcoholic. He's been a recovering alcoholic since I was about 16 years old, and I'll be 55 in a few weeks. So it's been a long time, almost 40 years. And um, he has had five heart attacks. He's had open heart surgery. Um, he's a brittle diabetic on an insulin pump, yet he's 89 years old. He's like a walking miracle. The doctors are just amazed. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and I've taped this down. It f does a couple of things. It keeps my paper from bowing while I'm painting, for those of you who are new to watercolor. And it also gives me a little framed area on the outside of my paper. And I want to make sure that those edges are pushed down good so that I don't have anything bleeding underneath the paper. If I do, I just cut it off and go without a framed in area. But, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do this in hyper lapse or time lapse and you can watch. <music> to make rays of sunlight come out. This has got to dry just a little bit more. I'm going to help it along. Oh, I shouldn't do this because I have I have uh, masking fluid down, so I'm going to have to stop that. But I use a thirsty brush and I'm just pulling out. you got to clean it with each with each um, swipe. Clean it, dry it on a paper towel so that it's, you know, not fully dry, but dry to the not dripping wet. And a thirsty brush just means that the paper is wetter than the brush is.
Okay, so now that the ground is in, I'm just gonna let this go dry before I remove the masking fluid. Um, if you don't let it dry thoroughly, you run the risk of ripping your paper, and I have torn so many papers by getting ahead of myself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue working on my commission, which I'm also recording, and once that's dry, we will come back to this, and I will finish the trees. turn out as good as I had hoped so I'm not sure I'm going to use it but when you pull tape off of your paper make sure your painting is dry you don't want to do it before it's dry again it can tear the paper but pull back on an angle almost like a 45 degree see how I have my tape pulling straight across that's how I pull my tape off and it helps to prevent tearing if you pull straight down like this you could end up tearing your paper so I always go like this very carefully all the way down the better the paper um, the less a problem you have with this but um, like cotton paper like this is um, partially cotton not a hundred percent and it runs a risk of tearing more than regular cotton paper would Okay, let's see how this turned out now. Eh. I'm not super happy with it, but I'm going to try to fix up the trees a little bit better and, and uh, make them look a little nicer. And then I will uh, go ahead and get started on the I card. I myself a... I'm going to back you up a little bit here so you can see everything. Um, I have myself a card. It's already folded. And I have my watercolor piece that I'll be gluing down here, but I don't have enough space around the edge that I'd like. So I'm going to cut some of the framework off because I want to take this gold sheet of paper and I want to put a layer behind it like that. So I'm going to need to cut the, cut the um, painting down just a little bit. And I've got this archaic old trimmer here that I'm going to use and the way I'll line it up is I'll line my painting up with the inside edge of this so that each side is the same width and that'll give me just a bit more to work with isn't as clean as I'd hope. I got a little roughness right there, but that's all right. It's my father. He won't care. My father is has very poor eyesight and is almost blind, too, so I don't even know that he'll see this or be able to read it. Hopefully he will. Um, okay, so now I have that cut, and I've got quite a bit more space here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this sheet. I'm going to use this piece. Get the tag off of this. This paper is probably 15 years old. Okay. I could just leave it on and stick it under the card. There we go. Now it's coming off a little bit. Oh, shoot. Yeah, it'll go underneath the card. It won't show anyway, so 
Alrighty. Um, if this is six, and I want it, oh no, it's six and a half. That's right. That's where I threw myself off. Okay. So I want to cut it right there. And then this side would be is five inches, correct? Yes, so four and seven eighths. That might actually be a little bit too, th not leaving enough of an edge that I'd want, but yeah, I think I want to cut a hair off. Go ahead and tape this down. And if somebody wanted to frame a card that you make, you can always, um, you know, you just make sure you buy acid-free tape and they can lift it. Or you can put dots down on the edges and put it behind a mat. That's another way to do it. So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead. I could write happy birthday out here, but I don't want to put anything over the painting because I know that he'll want to save it. So I'm just going to write him a message on the inside, and that is it. And that's the birthday card from my father. Everybody have a great day. Talk to you soon.